Welcome to another He Said, She Said, and this is episode 10. We made it this far, but Excellent. still much more to go. I love it. <laughs> First time tuning in, this is myself, Ronald Johnson, and what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and what they're in life. You're going through transition, you want to better relationships, you want to just say what the heck I'm missing in life, this is where I can help you. What about you, Denise? Well, I'm Denise Lewis, and I'm also a performance-based coach uh, like Ron, Ronald. Sorry, you're being a little formal today. <laughs> um, and I have a business called GrandSlamCoaching.com. You can always reach out to me. I can improve your performance either on the athletic field or in the boardroom, classroom, or the courtroom, wherever that performance needs to change. Um, and we're here on episode 10, which means next week we have to take off our shoes to get number 11 and absolutely let's kick it off to have a Grand Slam day. So Ron, our topic today, yay, we're going to spring forward. Spring forward. Spring and forward. Into whatever you want. I, I kind of like, like, like the twist spring because you know how we fall back, those that know mm -hmm. during the, the fall, then we spring forward to mm -hmm. this time. So Denise, kind of, I want you to start off first. What are you going to spring forward now, today? I'm springing forward into the fact that I'm going back to school uh, oh. for work for a retail management certificate. So that started last week was week zero. This week was week one. And I'm really springing into that. So I'm learning all about Canvas and online and e-texts and um couldn't find one assignment, Ron, and it turned out it was in the one class that has the good old fashioned textbook that I could read and open and hold in my hand and underline if, if required. <laughs> so I'm springing forward into that. I'm springing forward into uh, getting the dog back into walks twice a day. I'm awesome. springing forward into my son needs new clothes. <laughs> I'm okay. Springing, I'm springing forward in the fact that he's finally back to school. Uh, full time, and hopefully springing forward into it being warm enough that I can sit outside and get rid of this year old, you know, paley pallor that I've had. This COVID <laughs> AC look, you know, just get that little kissed by the sun glow. Awesome, and I think in California now, uh, indoor dining is opening up, so people actually go outside and choose between outside or indoor dining. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct in most counties. Yes, uh, I think it's 25% capacity. In fact, oh, hold on to your hats. My mother is coming tomorrow from the city to spend the night at my apartment with my son Friday and Saturday, and she wants to go out to dinner. Awesome. Okay, what place you got picked? I left that to my girlfriend, Anne, who is going to be joining us. Uh, who's also part of our, our family. And uh, Anne is very in touch with what's open, what's not, because she works days and I work nights. So I'm just, and I have tomorrow off, I'm leaving it up to her. But I, I think we're leaning towards uh, Chinese food. Awesome, that's good. So make sure you make reservations. You know, things right now are getting crowded fast. That's what we're, I told her. I, yep, you gotta make exactly. a reservation. And then uh, there's no lingering over the tables. So we'll just go down, we'll dine. This is what I love about my mother. She says, make anything you want. She pays for the groceries. So if she wants beef wellington, she pays. I cook it. Life's great. Now we're going out for Chinese food. She's going to pick up the bill. We're going to come back here. We're going to drink copious amounts of alcohol. I'll play Scrabble, kick her ass. And then, you know, everybody goes home. It's cool. Right. How old is your mom? She sounds very young. She is 84. Whoa. Okay. I know. I know. So she's still drinking alcohol. She's still going out to eat. She's still lively. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. She still drinks me under the table. It's a little embarrassing, quite <laughs> frankly. <laughs> Holy cow! It's it's a bit it's a bit much. And and there are, there are times we'll open up a bottle of wine. I'll have a glass. She'll have a glass. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to bed. She's like, yeah, I'm done. And I'll wake up the next morning. The bottle is empty. It's like what? Yeah. The bottle is empty. She's like, oh, I just don't know what happened. I guess I must have poured myself another glass. <laughs> Magically, the ball walked over two legs, jumped up, tilted itself full on 90 degrees, right to her cup. Magically, your hand is reached over there, picked it up, and drunk it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, she is a, you know, she is, 
very feisty and very spunky and very cool. And uh, it's always fun to have her over, but we haven't been able to because of COVID. And now she has her shots. I have my shots. You know, Kincaid's been, you know, locked up for a year. So, you know, we're all cool and uh, it'll be nice to have her over for a couple of days so she and my son can bond and have grandma, grandson time while I go awesome. to work. Awesome. I yeah. love it. I love it. Yeah. And, you know, in Washington, um, I think now, what's the day? Today's 18. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to a point where now we're at 50% capacity. Awesome. So you. It's kind of opposite in Washington compared to California. In California, you get more sun than rain. But for the last four to five months, everybody's been inside because it's been raining nonstop, snowing, mm -hmm. or it's really cold. So you're not going to have dinner outside, even though it could be clear skies when it's 30 degrees outside. Yeah. Okay, you're not going to do that. You can have all the heaters in the world. You're not going to do that. The wind is blowing 30 degrees. You're not going to do it. And definitely, if it's raining and or it's snowing, you're staying inside. So now, restaurants, reservations are being booked maybe a month out if we can actually get a reservation to actually go down and have a seat. Well, that's, or, you know what? that's, that's awesome. I'm, and, I'll and I'll tell you why. Yes, it's hard if you want that spur of the moment. I'm ready to go out to dinner. But I'm really pleased to hear that the economy is picking up again. And the restaurants now know that they have some sort of income coming in. And, and there's always takeout, you know? Uh, so it's funny. So DoorDash here, I don't know about California again. They're limiting the amount, or well, it's not DoorDash's fault, but um, small businesses are not going to DoorDash. So let's say, for example, it's a restaurant you've been going to, let's say, every week, you, you dine up from there once a week. It may not be on DoorDash the following week, because restaurants now are saying, wait a minute, I, I don't want to pay DoorDash fees, or, you know, like I discussed before on last podcast about the new modern uh, dining dash. There's yeah. Not being, so yeah. You, you, can't, you can't get it. So you actually have to go out. So make those reservations go out to eat and we're at almost 50 percent capacity gyms are open i'm awesome. super excited about that actually i found a second gym so like one gym four, isn't enough oh my gosh uh no 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 not all gyms the same not all thumbprints are the same that's a big difference so okay. my first visit bellingham i went to a place called bellingham fitness great gym i i looked online had what i wanted and you know, when it's a Google search, you kind of go on Google, especially not from here. I was in California. Went there. I liked it. It's pretty cool. Um, and then I've been going there ever since. You know, when, it, when the shutdown happened in November, they closed down. I worked out downstairs in my basement. Now I went back again. But I felt that I, I, I'm not growing enough. I, I got to get stronger. The weights are the way I like it. I want more machines. It's not enough variety. So I just so have to open up my Instagram. And um, I clicked on Bellingham, Washington to see all the different things that are happening. And someone tagged a place called uh, Training Grounds. All right, I'm like, oh, what is this? And when I first saw the picture of Training Grounds, it looked like a CrossFit gym. And that's when I saw it back in August. I'm like, okay, I'm not CrossFit dude. So I'm not going to be squat, deadlift, and burpees. It's not my deal. I like the bodybuilding aspect of working out. That's just my thing. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? I'm going to try something different. So I went online <clears throat> two days ago, typed it in. Like a ten dollar drop in if you sign up, the ten dollars be towards the membership. Mm -hmm. What's cool about this though? It's twenty four seven if you have a pass. So if I want to go in there at midnight, I have a key card and go right in and work out. And that's wow. awesome. Okay, not just that. You got two different gyms. One gym, you know, the demographics are a little bit older kind of crowd. You know, it's a little bit cheaper membership. Train grounds. Everybody's either competing, going to compete in great shape younger crowd so when i went there i saw the equipment i liked i saw the weights i liked i was like i'm gonna get huge because it's just a vibe just the energy there was completely different drawback is gym was eight minutes away now i go 20 minutes away but guess what i can't wait to hit the gym so that's my spring forth new gym transfer my body and getting strong as hell best i can <laughs> yeah, that's, I was just thinking that, man, you are springing into a new level of fitness and you've always been a fit guy all the times that I've known you. And I've seen those, I've seen those shirtless poses on your Instagrams and things, sunshine, you know, yeah. I, I, I envy the six pack, but. Oh, I do too. I, I wish I saw that six pack. Uh, the truth is as a transition out of training full time, um, and transition out to being more healthy, had a six pack 24, seven, 365. There's a secret about that. Not possible for everybody. If you want to get a six pack, 
24 seven, 365 a year, you have to be on point with your cardio. You have to be on point dialed in with your workout regimen and on point with your food. If you don't do those, it's very elusive. But at the same time, to get that six pack, you restrict your car calories at a higher rate. So I can't get strong if I'm restricting my calories. But am I in fit shape? Do I feel mentally healthy? Yes. Do I feel physically healthy? Yes. Do my clothes fit good? Yes. Am I confident? Yes. So I, I don't need to have a six pack. As long as I'm blood pressure down, weight's down, my clothes fit well, I feel mentally sound. Thumbs up for myself. Excellent. So, it's springing that, forward, that, into, it's forward into a whole new, much more improved you. I love it. I, I love, love it. it. But the much more improved me become mentally first. I spent so many years in training, always focusing on the body, the body, the body. My idea was then if I get my body stronger, it's hard to beat because it helped my mind. So if I get my body stronger, the mind becomes stronger. Ah, uh, yes. The that's mind nice. controls the body. The mind controls the yep. body, not the body controlling the mind. So this idea now, this whole last year going to the IPEC and going to different certifications, my mind is coming stronger. Thus, my body is coming stronger. So mm -hmm. I just passed off fresh off the press two hours ago. I'm now NLP certified coach. Yay, I'm so proud of you. That took you what, like four months? Yay. Get her done. So I'm super excited. Um, you know, I, I kind of gave a person the description. IPEC is a great school and coaching schools are really, really well because it gets you ready for ICF, ACC certified. But mm -hmm. coaching schools are just a frame mm -hmm. of a house. They create great foundation. You still got to add the pipes, still got to add the sink, you still got to add the toilet, you still got to add the refrigerator, you got to add things to it. Yeah. Yeah, the wallpaper, the paint. Well, see, yeah. it's funny that you talk about you got that certification because I have this coming week of school and then I have a week off for spring break. And when I'm on spring break, that's when I'm going to take my ACC test, my ACC certification. So When's I'm last time been on spring break? I, I got I got to hear that. When's last time been on spring break? Oh my god! <laughs> I had to ask that. I had to do it. <laughs> You mean like like go crazy and go on a trip somewhere, somewhere warm, all that other stuff and, and no. drink copious amounts of alcohol? Yeah, or better less. When's the last time you be able to use the term spring break? How long ago was that? Okay, um, I've never had a trip like that. <laughs> well, I, I was thinking more or less high school, maybe college, last time you actually said spring break. College was the last time I said spring break, but have I ever done one of those trips on spring break? No. No. Ooh. Nope. No. Nope. Closest I've come was in May of 2000, and I just moved back from Australia. And I took myself off to Cabo San Lucas for a week to a club med, all inclusive. A friend of mine dared me that if I got my scuba certification he'd take me shark diving when i got back so i went my first day i signed up for scuba i got it done in four days um i purposely chose a single room and the very first night the very first night i got sat at dinner with the water skiing guys and it was a beer drinking contest <laughs> now i was just back from 10 years in australia who won handily and of course they were like oh my god we want to party with you and i was like you guys are serial wick dippers no nope, not happening and i actually went to club med and i chose not to get laid awesome so what i know i never been to australia so in australia they drink a lot of beer is that what the deal is oh my god they drink a lot of beer there's a lot of chugging contest i i i learned a lot about drinking in australia yeah so you came back nice and, and well endowed and consuming a lot of alcohol. Absolutely. Yes. So no one can beat you. How, how about now? Does the same thing apply? Or has you, it's, it's turned a little bit. Drinking is different now. I'm sure I could finish in the top three. Oh, you still got I'm, the championship going. Okay. Yes, yes. I, I won drinking contests in Mexico, in uh, St. Lucia, in Jamaica. China doesn't really count because I was with a bunch of older people. Um, oh, okay. All right. Uh, Indonesia. 
Yeah, that's a, yeah, Australia. Oh, and New Zealand, of course. New Zealand. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. You know what? I, I, I won't even compete with you. Okay. <laughs> you, 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 just by the fact you're drinking on a table by thought process alone, I can't even compete because the most I do is maybe a little bit of whiskey. I do it neat. I put a little Coke in there, uh, maybe two couple glasses of those, maybe two maximum. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm scaling back. I, this is why I like drinking the White Claws because it's the little eight ounce can. I come home from work at like 11, 1130. I'll have two. And then the thought, oh, okay. of, the thought of opening up the third one, it's like, oh, I really want that one. But like, mm, I don't want to have to get up six times in the middle of the night. Whereas when I was yeah. drinking wine, thank God I started drinking wine a year ago. But I, you know, I have my glass, my bubble glass, and I'd fill it up. And, I, and, and if I didn't finish the glass, it would sit on my nightstand or I'd just go put it in the fridge and then, you know, drink it the next day. But it was like, it's amazing how quickly a bottle of wine would go down my throat. Mm-hmm. But then again, I used to be a world-class heathen. And now I've you know, changed my ways over the last 20 years because I sprang into better me and now I'm going to spring forward into better me again. So, you know, but man, if there's a bottle of gin, step back, just move away. It's all mine. And I'll come back at you when I'm ready. (laughs) Oh, okay. So basically I know what to buy you for your next Christmas gift then. Yes, I prefer Sapphire, but there's a few new gins on the market, and I think I need. I think we need to have a taste test party. And you know what? Cal- everything California's opening up, so it's like time to go California and have a drinking contest. Uh, uh, sorry, drink contest in my mind. Like I know I want to win, but you're probably gonna beat me literally. Well, that depends on the rules of the game. I mean, are we doing the hundred shots of beer in a hundred minutes? Are we doing the how quickly can you drink it? Are you talking about quantities over a certain period of time i mean there's all sorts oh. of ways you can do it and of course when i was in college we had the game called chug boat which was to this tv show of love boat and everyone got a character so every time you had a had a character your character was on screen you had to do a shot and god help you if you got the boat as your character <laughs> whoa what happened then because the boat was in every scene so every time you change scenes, you had to take a shot. Oh, that guy, a girl, are, are pretty wasted up in the night. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Wow. Okay. But we've so digressed from springing forward. Yeah. Well, this, so- well, this has been a great trait down memory lane. We have digressed from springing forward, and you have sprung forward with a brand new certification, which is awesome. You've sprung forward with a brand new gym and a new way to work out and a younger crowd and better vibe. And I've sprung forward into school and the fact that my son's back in school full time and out of this apartment for, oh, there goes my light, you know, for periods of time. And, uh, oh, I sprung forward into a new, I found a new challenge for myself. Okay, I, found new challenge? Virtual, I found the virtual running club. Oh, okay. Tell me about yes. that. Now I cannot run to save my life. However, I will walk to the moon and back absolutely happily and with the virtual running club i found and the first challenge i signed up for was the sesame street challenge so it was a hundred dollars and i track my mileage and i discovered that uh an average walk every morning with the dog is around um six to seven miles so yeah there are times when we have to shorten it up for various things so i consistently put five miles in a day for that and then I did a, got a Fitbit and discovered that I'm walking about 15,000 steps in an eight hour shift at work. Now 10,000 steps is three miles. So every day that I work a shift, I'm putting in another three miles, you know, just to be conservative about it. So I just completed my first 50 miles, which means I get a little medal that has um, the count on it. And wow. then when I get to 100 miles, I get I think it's Cookie Monster. And then when I eventually get to 500 miles, I get Grover. So I calculated out that it's going to take me 8.3 weeks to get to the 500 mile mark. Ooh, that's and, a huge challenge. And, 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 and then, of course, you get these medals. And it was $100. It's a tax write-off. It's for Sesame Street. I mean, who doesn't love Sesame Street? You know? I love it. Cookie Monster. That's what I'm thinking about. 
oh elmo man he was fantastic when we were going but anyway but so anyway so now through the virtual running club you can um sign up for all sorts of events there's one where you can sign up are you on team king kong or team godzilla and as you go and track your miles as you get to a certain point you get the medal so essentially you're just paying for a medal you know um and some are tax write-offs and some are not but it's a really cool way to to track mileage and get inspired to do more things. And um, you, there's one where you can run across the country like Forrest Gump. There's one where you can scale um, the seven summits of the world. Wow. Virtually, there's uh, quite a few that raise money for rescue shelters and rescue animals and service animals. So it's really kind of cool. And I wish I could afford to like buy them all, but um, but I don't. So I'm going to be picking my next one carefully because, um, you know, still got to pay for college eventually or trade school for this mm -hmm. young man. So I need to be careful with my money. But it's really cool that people have taken something as awful as this pandemic and said, you know what, in order to encourage you to spring forward and go exercise, if you sign up for this, you can go earn things and, you know, make a difference in the world. There's some that are fundraisers for the national parks. There's all sorts of cool stuff. Wow. Okay. That's really, really cool. I mean, that's a great idea. Someone has invested in this program to give back to the uni well, universe and give back to earth, right? That's that's yeah. really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, do you guys see people around the world like competing for this? Like, has someone already hit the 500,000 mile mark? Has someone done the around the world mile mark? So you guys see that or no? Um, you know, I don't know because I've only been on it a week, but it is called the um, the virtual running club and you get this spark, this spark, um, spark challenge app. Mm -hmm. And oh, see if I refer a friend, I get I get 4000 points, um, but I've got a Sesame Street challenge. There's the hometown Explorer National Park Explorer. Oh, run in 50 states, visit 50 states, the Zion Explorer Club um spark fitness challenge it's really that's really some cool some cool stuff that you can that's do. cool and, and you just sign up and you, if you want you complete one of those courses you mm -hmm. get a medal right yep absolutely and you get a funky little racing bib see i have my my one for the giants i've now done completed two for the giants um oh, so cool. i did the, so february was the heart of san francisco and i can't remember what january was and I get a pin for each of those. And then um, the March event is the Scottsdale race where you do um, a marathon through Scottsdale. So one walk of the dog gets to count for all these different things. And this is um, 12 runs, um, uh, one run a month for 12 months. And that money, that $100 I paid for that goes to the Junior Giants Fund, um, which is underprivileged kids getting baseball mitts, getting instruction, gloves bats you know to help encourage them to get outside and and uh and not only just learn a sport but be part of a team and 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 build their community network awesome so it's not just getting the medals and taking pictures right it's also giving back to the future generations that are underprivileged mm -hmm. that's amazing so yeah. you actually are giving and receiving at the same time absolutely and all for 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 me it, 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 it's the dog and I doing it because we have to get out and walk anyway. So yeah. why not put that energy in to, to, to think that I can go walk the dog and my walking the dog is helping someone else. I mean, that oh. is just so cool. I mean, what a, what a great way to spring forward into, into getting out of this pandemic, you know, springing forward and helping those around us. Awesome. And all the zipping around I do in the store to make it pretty and make it enticing for our shoppers and, you know, do my job that I can count my work time is not only, you know, not only am I a first, a first responder, which I never thought I would be in my entire life because I work in a grocery store and I'm providing awesome customer service and taking care of our customers. I can also use that to go help other people outside of my store, outside of my community. Awesome. You know what I'm noticing about our conversation? That's a couple of different things. When people think about spring forward or setting goals, okay, we're pretty much a goal setting outcome. That's just the reality. But anything we talked about right now was one, 
was an outcome, something we did. That's one, that's obvious. But they all almost cost zero dollars. Mm -hmm. Like me investing in myself, yes, it cost me to take these courses, but the loan, the investment was small, but the long-term benefit is huge. Mm -hmm. You invest in helping someone back. So we're doing things that not only provide us happiness, but help the whole world as a whole. Mm -hmm. And it's not like the cost a heck ton of money. That's the, that's what I'm noticing here. We're doing things that provide us level of happiness, the things that um, we can help other people about, that cost us a minimum amount of money. So people always say, well, I'm going to spring into a new vacation. I'm going to spring into finding a better relationship. I'm going to spring into finding that new job. Man, there's certain things you're doing right now daily that can get you where you need to go. Well, yeah, and it's, you know, helping... <sighs> Okay, this thought isn't going to come out right, but I'm going to go for it anyway. You know, I work at Safeway, and right now it's the Monopoly game, right? Mm -hmm. Well, in the last four or five years, I've always taken all the a good portion of the free stuff that I've won, like the you know the French bread and the, right. the pasta and all this other stuff, and I have actively collected it and then given it to the Contra Costa Food Bank. And last year. I really got, and it's, it's been like, you know, three or four grocery bags full, you know, not a huge amount, but you know, it made me feel good because I wasn't going to consume all of that food. Last year, I really got serious about it. And with the help of um, some of my colleagues who were like, here's a bunch of French bread, free French bread, loaves, coupons, you know, we're never going to do it. I finally got organized and dropped it all off on one day. I had like three shopping carts full of nothing but bread. Okay. I wow. figured out that I donated one day um, about $800 retail of food. So I had, wow. I had canned fruit, canned vegetables, pasta. I had soap. I had sponges. Um, so many loaves of French bread. It wasn't even funny. Hot dog buns, hamburger buns, all this sort of stuff. And I gave it in one day and that was, and I really only got serious about it maybe about halfway through. Well, and I was all excited about not Monopoly starting again this year because I was like, cool, I can collect all this food for the food bank and life's going to be great. Well, they've changed the game. Oh. <clears throat> so it's it's all digital, which is cool. So when you get a coupon, you scan it in, it goes through just for you and when you get free stuff. But I think just a combination of the pandemic and a combination of, you know, nobody's made the profits, even big companies in the last 12 months that they have. I think I've won five bottles of refresher water and a couple of things of Dan and yogurt. And, um, you know, I'm not winning anything to go donate to the food bank this year. Wow. So same game rules have definitely changed. Yep. Well, unbeknownst to you, they're giving away less, less free stuff. They're giving away less free stuff, but, it, but it makes sense after this past year, you yep. know? I mean, everybody, you know, people's spending were down because people lost their jobs. So everybody's profits are down and whatever, whatever. But this is really the time to give. And, you know, uh, you know, we spoke about this before, Ron, maybe in our mastermind group. I don't know if I've said it on these podcasts, but, uh, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas, you donate $10 to uh, buy a bag of food for the food bank. And because of COVID, we couldn't have the bag of food, but we, Safeway set up this whole account that this money went in so the food bank could go and buy the supplies that they needed to go give to the families. And I sold boatloads of bags, boatloads wow. of bags. Like if this so, was the entire store, what they brought in, I sold like that many of them, you know? And it was all just by asking nicely, hey, do, do you have time? Can you donate $10 to help a family, you know, get a Thanksgiving dinner or a Christmas dinner? And it's something that Safeway does every year, right? So did their numbers go up a hundred fold just because of the pandemic, people are donating more because they realize how difficult it is? Um, I don't know how it was compared to the year before, but I know that there are quite a few of my colleagues who didn't even try because they, I felt bad that they had negative attitudes because they were like, oh, it's COVID and nobody's going to give. And, you know, people have lost their jobs because we all know our customers pretty, pretty well. But um, I sold the daylights out of them. And I remember there's one couple who they didn't have a club card. They're buying a ton of alcohol. I was like, you can create your card. Just put in your phone number. I think I saved them like 150 bucks. Wow. Uh, so you can imagine how much alcohol they're buying this night. And I said, come on, do you want to, can you give 10 bucks to uh, the food bank? 
And they're like, no, 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 no. And I'm like, what? I was just like, hang on a minute here. I saved you all this money and you can't give $10. And finally, the woman said, turned to her husband and said, honey, just give the $150 to the food bank. We wouldn't have it if it wasn't for her. We can afford it. Wow. 15 bags in one shot. I, I really guilt, I, I guilted them into it. I really <laughs> did. But it was like, yeah. So, you know, it all just all depends. It worked. Yeah, it did. It's all that matters. It worked. So it worked. go I get it. Yes, I sprang into goodness, so. Good. So this is for, here are our experiences, guys, after listening to this podcast. There's something that's a huge takeaway is we set goals for the January 1st of the year, whatever the goal is, because we think we set a goal. Most of the time it's weight loss, get back career, better shape, find love, right? Top five goals, right? But then, you know, maybe six months go by, sorry, six months, six weeks go by, eight weeks go by, but you know, spring, you're like, oh my God, I still haven't made my goal yet. Here's the perfect, <laughs> our, our eight days, right? <laughs> Here's the perfect time to spring in to new you, whatever yeah. it is. Whatever it, whatever it is, the whole point about this is a ripple effect. While I pass the NLP certification, after I passed, I sat there, I was like, oh my goodness, I did it. Oh my, I can't believe it. But two hours later, I signed for another course. It created all this excitement that I need to go. So I created, I signed up for another course. It's like, okay, cool. If I can learn this, what else can I learn? Or what else can I do? Same thing for you. It's not over. Yeah, it's what, totally what, not over. What can you do next? What can you sign up for? How can you help? Or how can you get back? Whatever it is that makes you happy that makes you feel like you're contributing to the world or to yourself. Well, first, always contribute to yourself first. You help yourself, you help everybody else around you. Mm -hmm. It's law, what laws work of, of the universe. But there's never enough, it's still time there. Don't give up. You can do it, whatever it is. And once you figure out the first step in to achieving anything, the very first key step, forget about setting a goal. Forget about all that because they don't mean nothing. They don't mean anything until you believe you can achieve that or mm -hmm. get where you need to go. Because if you don't believe it, you can set a smart goal, you can set a present goal, you can set a grow goal, you can set a heart goal, you can set whatever these goal models that are out there. But if you don't believe you can get there or you don't have the resourcefulness already inside you, baby, don't stop the car because you won't get there. 